Well, good morning, magandang umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Boy, do we have an exciting episode for you today. And I know I normally say at the very beginning of each episode, boy, do we have an exciting episode for you today. But today, we really do have a really exciting episode for you today. Uh, and plus, we are celebrating a milestone. Today's episode is episode number 1,000, 1,000 episodes that we have recorded here on My PI Dream since the beginning, the inception in February of 2017. So anyway, uh, today's episode has to do with something that didn't get completed at the beginning of our build in 2017. Uh, we were supposed to have a custom-built wardrobe inside our bedroom our walk-in closet area up in the master bedroom suite done by our contractor. Unfortunately, our contractor didn't complete our project and we ended up doing many of the tasks on our own. And as of today, I can officially say that the walk-in closet project is completed. And you're gonna be extremely surprised at some of the features included in this DIY project for our home build. So well, let's go ahead and get today's episode started. And without further delay, let's get today's video underway. And let me start today's episode by saying that we did something a little bit unique. And unique normally means you do something that's outside the box, things that a lot of people haven't thought about. And as a previous systems integrator, that's one of the things I like doing. I like thinking outside the box. Now, you'll notice if you watch the build series for Villa Feliz here in the Philippines, you'll see that in our walk-in closet, our walk-in wardrobe area, there is a space in the back that if you have cabinetry inside there, you almost couldn't be able to use this little hidden space that we use to hide things like our, uh, our luggage. We have things that we don't use on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, well, when you build cabinetry inside that area, it blocked off that area, or so most people would think so. So I needed to find a unique way to be able to figure out and not lose that space. You're gonna find out how we did that in today's episode. Now, another good thing about doing this as a DIY project, you're going to save yourself thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of pesos if you live here in the Philippines like I do. So this is a great opportunity for you to get some hands-on experience, build something exactly the way that you want for your own custom design and save a lot of money. Well, that is enough of the build-up for today's episode. So let's go ahead and get in today's video. Now, this is just a big hole in the wall right now that we have inside here. This was originally supposed to have some custom cabinetry done by our contractor who we paid to actually build some custom cabinets inside here. But that never got completed. Uh, our contractor, if you remember from our build series, actually never finished the home build and I actually had to take it over myself. Uh, in the last 30 to 60 days of our construction. Anyway, this is what we have. Uh, this is the challenge. And when I say challenge, we have something that's a little unique here. It has potential. You have to have a vision. You have to have some kind of way to uh, mitigate one of the problems that we have right here. Now, if you remember in our build series, we made an extra area right here. Normally, this wall right here was supposed to go all the way to this back wall right here. So this supposed to be a traditional kind of a room inside here where we were planning on putting cabinets here, some cabinets over here, and some cabinets over on this side right here, or wardrobe cabinetry. Anyway, uh, when we were building it, way back when, uh, we decided to add this extra area back here so that we could put things like luggage, clothes here, and luggage, and things that you don't normally use, like a storage space, a little cubby hole. Now, Therein lies the problem uh, that we're gonna have to try to figure out today. Uh, to, instead of completing, cutting this area off here, here, and here, and closing that off, there's gotta be some way, we have to figure out some way to be able to take advantage of this great amount of space for some storage of things that we don't need on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, after careful consideration, I think I have an idea or a design where we can get our 
space that we need to hang up our clothes, our shoes, some drawers for some clothing items, and still at the same time be able to take advantage of this space back here. Seems challenging? Just hang on, see what I came up with. Now down here in the basement workshop, I decided to go ahead and start working on the biggest challenge was how can I take advantage of that space on the back wall where I can get into that little cubby hole, that little nook that we'll be using to store things that we don't need on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so what I came up with is I came up with a design. You can see I've already started here this morning and the design involves a movable base. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some casters. We're going to put some casters on this. This is actually upside down. This will be a movable base that will go along the back wall. And I'll show, kind of give you an idea. We'll walk back upstairs in just a moment on how the concept is going to go. Uh, but let me go ahead and grab a couple of the casters and I'll show you how it's going to be mounted on this platform. Now here's some wheels that I have inside here. These are normally used for like a rolling gate. If you have a big gate in your front front yard for your vehicle or something like that, uh, you'll be able to slide a fence on top of that. Now this is upside down. This is the bottom. And I'm just gonna stick a couple of them here temporarily. And this is a rail. And the rail would normally be mounted to the floor just like this. This right here on the floor. Uh, drill in some anchors so you'll secure it so it doesn't move and as I said this is upside down but the concept is going to be this is going to be a moving base and we're going to have wardrobe cabinets on the top of it so that we can access that area and I'll, again I will show you when I move upstairs how it's going to work uh, but anyway you'll see this is the 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 magic that's going to make this all work you see right here. So anyway, uh, let me go ahead and uh, go upstairs and kind of give you an idea uh, how this is going to work in the actual workspace. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we're trying to achieve. Here we have the base. This is the, the principle for the base with cabinets on the top that will move left and right so that we can access that area back there. There will be a fixed, a fixed cabinet here where Mary Ann is sitting right now. And then there'll be a fixed cabinet over here on this side right here. And they'll match up with the corner. You can see the corner on this side and the corner over here. So let me show you how this is actually is supposed to work. Now since the actual wardrobe location is up on the third floor, basement first floor and the second floor, basically, but it's up two flights of stairs. So the best thing for me to do is go ahead and do the cutting and the rough assembly down here. Then I'll take it apart. When I say rough assembly, I mean that I don't do any gluing. Because if I do it gluing, then I would have to bring the whole assembly up and it would be almost impossible for me to do this on my own without any help. So anyway, uh, I have the basic framework done right here. I will be cutting some shelves out right here. I've decided to go ahead and put a, a shelf right here with some small cubby holes, a bigger set of cubby holes right here for some of Nessa's bigger purses, and then we'll have two spaces right here to hang clothes, one large space here to hang clothes, and a couple of drawers down on the bottom. Uh, so let me go ahead and start working on some of the shelves. I'll take everything apart, I'll bring it upstairs, do a reassembly, and then we'll put the back on. Now when you do the back, what I did here, I just want to show you, I used a, my, my saw over there with a dado cutter, and I cut about a half inch, a uh, little, right around a half inch around here, and this will form the, the 3 8 inch back back wood that we're going to put inside here. And that, when it's cut square, which it's over there on that wall, when you put it inside, it will square up your frame. So you don't really have to worry about it now, whether it's perfectly square or not. The backboard, once it's installed, will make it square. Now up here in the walk-in closet, you can see I did the assembly, put everything together, except for the very top. The top will be the last thing I put inside because I have to be able to ma made it up to the little roller assembly. You see, I used the router 
and I cut a groove inside here. And that is where the roller that's attached to the wall is gonna slide into the top. This is the top of the cabinet. And what that will do, that will prevent any movement in or out. That's a little roller guide that's up there. Even though it's not really necessary because never will the cabinet here be open where it could fall forward because if it's in that direction it's going to lean up against the the cabinetry on this side and if it's in this direction it's lean on this side and when it's centered it will be leaning right or almost touching both of them so it could never fall forward but for an additional protection i went ahead and installed that so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to slide this out let it sit on these uh, four inch thick pieces of wood so that i can get to the back and put the back uh, 3 8 inch uh, plywood on the back uh, and then when that gets done slide it back in take the top mount it on the top and it will be done except for the facing and for the drawers that need to be done and of course the little rods that we'll use for the hangers. Inside the back panels are installed the cabinets are glued together with each other. And I installed this morning, I installed a couple of the hanger rails, the rods inside there. And these are just, you can get these at your hardware store. These are like what you would put up also inside your shower for a shower curtain. As a, as a matter of fact, I believe the hardware says it's shower curtain hardware. And I have one there and I have one here. Uh, and what I did, I gave some room for the back so that when you have larger pieces of clothing, they won't be resting up, hopefully against the back wall. Uh, you could actually put about three inches if you want two to three inches for the back side. Uh, but since this is a cabinet that goes inside a wardrobe, not something with doors on it, a lot of the cabinets are made where the clothes actually stick out just a little bit further. But I asked Ness and Ness said she wanted it as much inside the cabinetry as possible. Uh, so I set this back a little bit closer to the back wall. It's, it's a personal preference. Now I'm not going to do any of the facing until the end, until I get all three cabinet units in, inside here. Uh, I'll go ahead and put up the other rod over here probably this afternoon. And this morning I'm going to start on this cabinet over here. This is mine. It's a lot smaller than my wife's, but my wife has more clothes. So appropriately, she should have a little bit more space. Also, I want to keep peace in the family. So <laughs> anyway, today I'm going to go ahead and start building the base here. Once I get the base, making sure that I have the appropriate spacing between this cabinet unit and this cabinet unit here, then I'll start doing the assembly, uh, the building, the construction of this cabinet on this side. I spent the better part of yesterday cutting all the melamine plywood for the cabinets that we're going to put up next to the ones that we already assembled. Uh, I also did the dado cuts. When I say the dado cuts, that's these cuts on the back, you can see, so that we can fit the 3 8 inch plywood that's going to go inside the back section right here. Although the wood is ready to be assembled, it's not really ready to be assembled because I have to treat it. Uh, even, even though that this is marine plywood and it's finished, it still has raw wood all the way around it, especially on the ends. We're not really worried about the melamine itself, but we're worried about the raw plywood around the edges. So we're going to treat it with the selignum all around clear. Uh, this will prevent any type of insect infestation later on down the road. So I'm gonna get my brush. If I had a roller, I really prefer using a roller. But all the edges around all of the plywood, we're gonna go ahead and treat with several coats of this selignum all around clear. The biggest challenge, once you get all the wood up, and I'll tell you, uh, it's three flights of stairs getting up here. It's quite exhausting. Uh, if you have a person that you can have assisting you with doing uh, the lifting and the moving of the wood or the cabinets, if you pre-assemble them, uh, it's always helpful. But I'm doing this by myself. Well, me and Marianne. You can see Marianne's a big help up here. So uh, I have the panels all up here. These are the side pieces. These are the shelves inside here. This is the base that will attach to this base right here. And now the challenge is doing the assembly. 
Well, as you can see, it worked. I was able to get everything assembled, put together, lined up, secured, and we have this unit completed, except for the facing, of course, and I gotta get some more hardware for some of the hanger rods. Uh, I'll pick that up maybe tomorrow. Today I'm actually focusing on the very next unit, which is going to be the unit right here. Now, I got a little bit of a challenge on this side too. This is an exhaust pipe uh, for the fan that's uh, and downstairs, and it brings air out through the roof. Uh, but we're gonna work around this right here. So you can see, uh, the rolling unit seems to be working good. Everything's nice and lined here. I've got enough room for the facing on both sides. I'll leave about an eighth of an inch of a gap inside there uh, to allow for any expansion or movement later on. Hopefully they don't bump into each other when this unit is rolling back and forth. Uh, but as you can see, I have my opening. Opening that goes back into the little secret area where we're gonna put our luggage. Uh, okay, so let me go ahead and get started on this unit right here, which is going to be for shoes. Now I'm working on the shoe rack, and while I'm working on the shoe rack, I thought this would be a great opportunity to go, to go ahead and talk a little bit about one of the pieces of equipment that I'm using here to make all these very long straight cuts for the wood paneling. Uh, the wood, the plywood that I'm using here, has to be cut accurately or else things won't fit properly. And to be able to get very accurate cuts, I'm using this Bosch uh, FSN 1600 guide rail. This guide rail can be used just like you see it right here for smaller pieces right here, or you can attach two of them together like you see right here, and you can cut a piece of wood like a panel of a four by eight sheet of plywood uh, with two of these accurately, 100% straight all the way. Now the traditional older way of doing it, you would use a table saw. You would slide it through the table saw and you have a fence on the side and that helps you get an accurate cut. But if you don't have some way to extend beyond basically like a table that's connected to your table saw it's really difficult for one person to be able to push all these big pieces of plywood through this right here so normally what I use this for is for my dado cuts inside here for the back of my cabinetry anyway I'm gonna give you a quick example of how to use the the guide rail right here with the plunge saw that I have over here. Uh, the plunge saw is, makes very, very accurate cuts as well. Also, I'm using these little clamps. The clamps fit very easily through here. They go in and then you clamp your piece of wood to whatever deck that you're using, your table, and it keeps this nice and steady and it will not move from side to side. It's now time to do the shoe rack cabinetry. And you see I already have it partially installed down here inside the basement. It's actually two units. It's a unit on this side and there'll be a unit on this side, but we have that pipe up there. So I have to work around that pipe. I'll do that last since the pipe up inside the wardrobe walk-in closet area isn't perfectly straight. I wanna make sure all the cuts are good. So you can see what I've done. I've got seven shelves plus a bottom shelf, which will make eight shelves for the shoes. What I decided to do is these here, uh, each one of the above the bottom shelf are at a 15 degree angle. That should be enough angle so that the shoes will slide forward a little bit. And when we put the facing on here, the facing will stop at the toe of each one of the shoes. Your angle is depending on what your des desire is. I think this will work the best for us so that you can see the shoe good. And again, there will be a light on the back of the facing right here that will provide light on each one of the shelf shelving inside here for each one of the sets of the shoes. All right, so let me go ahead and continue doing this assembly here. I do a rough assembly right now because we're up on the second floor above ground and I will be taking all this apart and bringing it and doing a final assembly up there and the final gluing. So this is just a rough assembly to make sure everything fits properly. So I have made some progress today. Today was shoring up, squaring, uh, leveling all of the cabinets. So we're good here on the shoe cabinet. There's going to be a mirror. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, we're gonna put a mirror inside there. Uh, I got all of the, the poles 
for the clothes hanging. They're all in place, you can see. And we have a special one right here. This one is for, for pants, uh, just for pants hanging. So everything for hanging, the hardware is, is installed, most of the hardware except for the drawer slides for these. And that'll be the last thing that I do is the drawers inside here. Uh, so the next thing is to start doing some of the woodwork. And I'm gonna start from the bottom, cover up that ugly two by four uh, floor support all the way around the rails, the little railroad track that we have right here. And, and then once I get those done, we'll start doing the vertical hardwood strips as well as the horizontal that are going to have some light strips, LED light strips that are gonna give us hopefully a nice effect uh, and visibility on our clothes and our shoes inside the wardrobe. All right, you can see I already installed the first piece of the floor trim uh, that goes on the base of the cabinet right here. And this is mahogany. This is mahogany that I, uh, that I mill down inside the workshop in the basement. So the next step is to put one here and give me enough of a gap so that this can slide back and forth. But it looks almost like they're connected. Uh, so I'm going to have to get some of the trim cut over here you know, the floor molding here. And let me show you a tool that I really like, that I find is really handy. And this is the multi-purpose oscillating tool right here. And you can see it's got a little trimmer here and it will cleanly cut that piece of molding on the floor over there. And I'll show you here. Here's an invaluable tip I'm going to pass on with you today, and it has to do when you have walls that aren't straight. Uh, your cabinets might be square and level, but your walls might not be. And for us, uh, during our construction, especially when it got to the second floor, the, the builders just did a horrible job lining things up. They just did everything by eye, and uh, their eye isn't as calibrated as a square or something that would actually help. It becomes square. So anyway, uh, the tip for today is how do I fill, uh, put the trim on the edge so that I don't have a big gap because of uneven walls. And I'm gonna show you right now. Uh, what I did was I built this little jig, just a piece of, piece of wood that I had laying around. And I put, took a sander and I sanded it on the end. And then you take a pencil, you take a pencil, you can stick it inside so that it sticks out on the other side just like this. And what you'll do, is you will level off making sure that the back side of your trim is the same at the top and the bottom so it is square to your cabinetry uh, but since your wall is off and you can look you can see the big difference in the wall right here we're down to zero here and we're like one 1.2 1 1.3 um, one and a half centimeters is what we have off up in this area right here so what we're going to do we're going to scribe from the very bottom and we're gonna follow all the way up. And what this will do, this will draw a line in relationship to the wall, and then we'll use a scroll saw and we'll cut that piece off. Just make sure you leave enough extra so that once you have this side taken care of and it's nice and flush up against the wall, you have enough left over so that we can do the nice square cut with our table saw. Now using our handy dandy scribe here, you can see now that one centimeter difference between the bottom and the top is almost invisible. So as you can see, we have the shoe rack cabinetry completed. I have eight, I believe it's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight uh, shelves inside here. Uh, enough for a minimum of 16 pairs of shoes, but my wife's shoes are kind of small, so we probably have more than uh, that amount inside there. There will be a mirror. I've already or ordered the mirror that goes in this side right here, so it's a full-length mirror, uh, so my wife can do the clothing thing that women do. 
Uh, so the next thing we have to do is install some pull-out drawers. We're going to do two pull-out drawers here and two pull-out drawers here. Uh, so that's what the task is for today. How about you helping me today? Okay, today's task is assembling a couple of the drawer units that are going to go into Ness's wardrobe. What I used was the remnants, the leftover pieces. You see I have a lot of leftover pieces from the full 4x8 sheets of the mahogany melamine plywood that we built the actual cabinets out of. So I'm going to use those. And you notice it's something a little bit different. Instead of having a cut look, look of the actual plywood on the outside, on this portion right here, this is finished. What I used was, let me see if I can find it. I used this tape. Uh, this, is, uh, this is stripping, uh, edge stripping right here. And edge stripping, you cut it to length. You can see what it looks like right here. You cut it to length. And then what you'll do is you need some way to glue it to the unfinished edges of your plywood. Now this edge stripping here normally requires a type of an epoxy glue with an activator uh, and I don't have that here. Uh, so what I ended up doing, I substituted using the mel melamine glue that's normally used to assemble uh, something, regular wood plywood against melamine uh, and it will hold very strongly to that. And ba this is basically the same kind of thing, it's a stripping a melamine type of a stripping, and the bottom side is this unfinished wood. So I use that. I put a piece of wood on the top. I put some clamps on and let it sit there for about 30 minutes. Then I came after that to get this nice clean finish on here. I use this handy dandy neat little tool made by FastCap, and I really like this for doing the trim. Now what you do with this when you're doing your trimming, there's going to be some overhang on both sides and you see the little grooves inside there you would put this on the overhang and then you would put it on here then you slide it down and it cuts very cleanly with that little razor blade inside there and you'll see this is these little strips that come off of here this will be what's left over and these will fall to the floor and then you have a very nice clean finish on here like you see and if you want to you can also take something like maybe a 120 or 150 grit type of a sandpaper and just a little bit on the edges right there uh, to get a little bit nice cleaner cleaner type of a look on your cabinetry stripping now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and take the base and i'm going to rough it inside before i do any clamping or gluing or screwing just to make sure there are no gaps and this is cut perfectly to the little dado cut that i have all the way around on the inside if it fits right and if it's square one of the best tools you can have for squareness is this carpenter square right here you just put it on the edge and make sure that it fits perfectly square all the way around and then I'll go ahead and finalize uh, putting the glue and the screws inside there and it will be ready to go upstairs for the wardrobe. Now this is not going to be the finish on the outside. This is just a square box. While I'm waiting for some of the edge banding to dry on here where I can trim it, uh, this is going to be the front face that goes on the front of the drawer. Uh, and actually the drawer is right here, the completed drawer. And once that's cured and it's trimmed up, this is just an example here. This is an, uh, the front facing cover, uh, but there will be a, a cover that goes on here like this, and then we need a handle. So I started working on the handle, and I actually really like this style handle right here. I've already cut it to the dimension that we need for the front, which is going to be something like this right here. But what you do, you see this little lip that hangs down here? We'll use the table saw over here, and we will cut a groove into the top of the facing panel here and we'll slide tap this down on the inside and if we have some liquid nail that usually works the best for inside to keep it from coming apart later on and then this is the the door handle that you will use to pull to pull it out all right I'm gonna go ahead and work on that right now and here's a great tip if you don't want to have a cut right here uh, when you run your drawer door all the way through the facing of your drawer door all the way through your table saw uh, what you can do is on your handle you can cut off some of this right here so you just get yourself a pl some pliers and what you'll do is you will break off some pieces so it will not
and you just go down until you can get it to the point where your saw will go in and you'll be able to slide this in and you won't see that nasty looking unfinished cut on the end of your, your drawer facing. Getting very close to the end of this project, I just have to do a couple things. You see, I got the drawers installed and they actually work really, they work really nice. So anyway, uh, the, the next thing that I'm going to do inside here is I'm going to install some lights. And I want to show you this really neat lighting kit that I found on Lazada. Uh, it, it, it's a little light strip inside here. You can get them to custom sizes, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and so forth in uh, centimeters. And you can also get them to custom. You can order them for whatever size that you want. Most of what I ordered here is in custom sizes. But you can see it has an aluminum frame here. And what it does, if you do a little dado cut in the back, and I've done dado cuts behind each one of the face plates on here, all the way, even the foot, for the uh, for the shoes, for the shoes, and for when we put the mirror inside here, I got to check up on the mirror today to see if the mirror is in yet. And they fit right inside the dado cut in the back, and they should project a nice light inside each one of these compartments inside here. And they hook up to this little power supply. Here, let me hook it up, and I'll show you what they'll look like once they hook up to the power supply. Now, you can get the power supply and like three port, six port, eight port, 10 port. Uh, when I say ports, that's the plus and the minus DC voltage that goes out to the LED light strip here that hooks up to this little connector right here. And what's nice about it, when you do the dado cut for the actual aluminum frame that fits into the back of your faceplate, uh, this connector is so thin, if you ever, ever have to replace it, you can just pull this and this little connector right here, it's so, so small, it will slide through your little dado cut. So you can do a replacement for any that fail in the future. Now one of the things at the end of your project uh, you should fill in some of the brad nail holes with a little bit of putty. Put a little bit of putty inside and cover it up a little bit. Now, uh, once you fill that in, you let it dry a little bit. Now, there are different methods you can use with different types of woods. With this type of wood here, you could either sand it and then do some more of the stain afterwards, or you can come with a little bit of a wet rag. Get rid of the extra residual on the outside it will be nice and smooth and you can avoid doing sanding. And then what you can do later on is you can just put a light layer uh, with a uh, rag that has just a little bit of stain on it and it will cover that up. And then you won't see any of the brad nail holes anywhere inside your facing. Now hey, let's head on up the stairs. I just got the mirror installed. So we can officially say that the cabinet project, cabinet wardrobe pro project is actually completed. Let's go ahead and walk inside and take a look and see what it looks like. All right, let's get some lights on inside here. This is the, the lights and you can see all the cabinets are done with the facing, uh, the four drawers, uh, the shoe rack, and this is what I have been waiting for three weeks. This is one of the reasons why it's taken me so long to get your video out because I was waiting on this really nice mirror that I installed inside here with some mirror construction adhesive on the back. So it's kind of seamless in its spot. I'm really happy about that. Ness hasn't seen this yet. Oh, and one last thing I have to show you. Now this is with all of the lights uh, that are on each one of the shelves inside here, all the drawer units, uh, each one of the cabinet enclosures inside here for the clothes, for the clothes hanging, everywhere, including the shoe rack. Each, each shoe shelf inside here has its own light. And again, for the mirror area right here. So Ness can stand inside here. She can stand over here. She can do her trying on of her clothes, make sure everything looks appropriately. So anyway, what do you think? Okay, I want, I want to see with her face when I mean, she hasn't seen this yet. <laughs> but 
But there it is. What do you think? Oh my God. <laughs> your mirror, your mirror is in. Your mirror is here. Yeah. Oh my God. Now I, I, so I, cool. I just cleaned it. <laughs> So don't get fingerprints all over it. Uh, but yeah, what do you think? Is the mirror okay? Does it does it fit you okay? Look at there. What do you think? Yeah. It's good. It's good. Good. It's very nice, babe. Okay. Uh, all right, there it's you like go. It's like a dream come true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we have not had a closet for ever. Never. Four years? Six years. Five years? Six since, years. <laughs> since the house was since built. Since the house was built. Yeah. <laughs> so now we have, we have flights. So I can't wait to start putting our uh, clothing up here. Uh, one more thing. One more thing that we have to show. And the very last thing that makes this so special, so unique that I haven't seen anybody else do. Remember that area way back there inside the back that we were hiding our things like our luggage and all my backpacks and all the kind of stuff like that. Well, we haven't lost that room because when I open this, <laughs> hey, what are you doing back there? <laughs> I'm having a panic attack. This is my panic room. Oh, and I need some snacks here and a little TV. So I can... <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so you can see that that area back there is going to be really great for uh, for our storage, our hidden storage. Uh, I can fit back there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and for me, this is for my pants, and I can pull all these out so I can see each one of the pants inside there. And this one again, this is for your longer dresses and things like that. So I think it came out pretty good. What do you think? Well, I am happy to be done with this project. Although it was a lot of fun throughout the project, I need to start utilizing some of this space back here. Uh, this was a great DIY project, especially for the fact that we have something that I don't think I've seen before, and that's the little hidden track rail system that we have here to be able to access are things that we don't need to see on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. And that's those things like luggage and some spare sheets and things like that inside that area back there. Uh, I would like to thank uh, a couple of people and that has to do with some of the logistics support that I got here. Uh, one man, it's, it's kind of difficult to do everything and I was able to reach out to Romeo Nocete from Caribbean Construction to help me with the delivery of some of the plywood that we use inside here and also Kit Sanchez of Centro Glass who we got the mirror from today and was able to get that installed. And I really love the quality and the fit and finish of this mirror right here. Uh, again, uh, it, it's, it's great to have friends to assist you when you have a need. Uh, and the same thing goes, if they have a need, you help them out as well. That's the way they do things here inside the Philippines. If you enjoy projects like this, you're gonna enjoy the next project that has to do with this, because you see, there's no doors on any of these inside here, but we're going to be building doors that will close this enclosure of the walk-in closet area uh, in an upcoming video. I think you're gonna really enjoy that as well. But anyway, let's go ahead and close and let's get back to some normal programming on my PI Dream. Uh, we had a lot of people that have been asking, where are you, how are things, is everything okay? Well, everything is okay. This just was just a very time consuming project here. But thank you for your concerns and we're gonna get back into the stream of things. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. Please share, and if you have not subscribed, just click on the little My PI Dream heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You'll be subscribed, and if you ring that bell, you'll be notified the next time I upload a new video. So until some time from right here in the very beautiful Philippines, you have a wonderful and blessed day.
if you enjoyed today's episode and you would like to see more just like these, just click on one of the helpful links over to your right and you might be able to pick up on some good information on DIY projects, how to, or if you are interested in moving to the Philippines and building, you'll find answers there as well.